Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. On behalf of Ingram Micro, I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Cloud Marketplace Next CP, Self-Service and Self-Management Made Easier. My name is Alyssa Laham, and I'm your host for today's webinar. Before we get started, I want you to be aware that the session is being recorded. If you're participating in a listen-only mode, however, we greatly encourage your questions and comments, which you can input into the Q&A box that's on the bottom right side of your screen. We'll be sending out the recording and the slide deck just a few business days after this webinar, so early next week. And now I'd like to introduce Gabriel Ballo, our Global Product Manager. And I'll hand it over to Gabriel, who will get us started with a presentation. Gabriel, the floor is yours. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for joining uh, this fantastic webinar. Um, really excited to be here. Uh, and. I would like to go through a couple of uh, items, a couple of topics that um, have to do with a new upgrade or new enhancement that Ingram Micro is implementing uh, in the cloud marketplace in U.S. Uh, at the end of the, at the end of August. So with that, let's get going. So what is NextCP? That's the topic that we're going to be discussing today. NextCP is a term that Ingram Micro is using to describe the new customer control panel. And we'll talk about that and what it entails and what it means to you. Uh, we're going to also talk about some of the advantages of NextCP, right? So Ingram Micro is not just pushing out updates to the system without looking at what is the benefit for the reseller partner and benefit for your end customers. And what are the benefits associated with self-servicing? We're going to show you a short demo of what NextCP is. We're going to cover some. Uh, we're going to highlight some of the components and areas within the, the new customer control panel layout. Uh, hopefully, give you a little bit of um, of a feel of the enhanced improvements that we're implementing and how it relates to your customers. We're going to talk about some of the services that are optimized for NextCP and what are the next steps from you as a reseller partner and how you can best leverage these uh, services to, you know, with your customer, not services, but the control panel with your customers. So what is the difference between CCP and NextCP, right? So I don't think it's, uh, um, I don't think it's important to, um, to discuss acronyms, but rather let me define what CCP stands. CCP means customer control panel, right? And this is where you as a retailer partner can manage your own account or your end customers can log in and manage themselves. In some cases, the reseller partner, such as yourself, can log in and impersonate an end customer uh, by logging into that end customer's CCP. The difference or the, um, the major differences between what we have today and what it will be tomorrow, and tomorrow meaning the end of the month and with NextCP, is an improved GUI interface, an improved user experience for the end customer. When we designed NextCP, which really is the new customer control panel for your end customers, when we redesigned NextCP, we didn't just improve on the functionalities. We completely redesigned everything. From the, uh, from the beginning. We redesigned the user experience, we redesigned the user interface, and you will see all of this um, when I show you the demo. And we will highlight the fact that we have built this with the user experience in mind. Okay. Let's take a look here. So uh, let's talk about NextCP itself, right? The Cloud Marketplace, with its redesigned customer control panel, provides your customers and you, when you impersonate your end customer, a modern user experience, right? It enables you as a reseller partner to in elevate, to improve your customer relationships, right? It enables you as a reseller partner to run a more efficient cloud business and essentially sell more services with innovative in-context scenarios. User management is done on the NextCP console in one single place. You can do subscription management, which is also done in the in NextCP console, again, in a single place. Assignment of services is also managed in this single place in NextCP. You get real-time notifications. You get a consistent user interface across services and end customers. You get an adaptive user interface on smartphones and tablets running either iOS or Android technology. A mobile version of NextCP opens up on mobile phones, and a desktop version will open up on tablets. And 
most importantly, you can custom brand a customer control panel. So as a reseller partner in the past, when you enabled your end customers to log into the customer control panel, it always showed Ingram brand, whereas with NextCP, you now have the option of going in and branding that customer control panel with your brand and logo. Okay, so as I mentioned before, right, the in-panel marketplace or, or um, Within the customer control panel, there is a section that's called marketplace. This in-panel marketplace allows you to easily discover and purchase additional services and offerings. And when I say allows you, I mean you as a retailer partner in person making the end customer, and your end customer has the option of login when they log in to go and discover available new offerings, review them, purchase those additional services as if you were placing those orders on their behalf. You have a single view of all services provided by, uh, you know, intelligent widgets. Uh, the navigation panel also can um, provide your customers more context on what it is that they're buying without losing um, visibility to the service uh, information. And then finally, as an administrator, whether an end customer administrator or as a reseller partner uh, impersonating the end customer, you can buy additional resources for existing subscriptions or apply for a new subscription that they currently uh, don't consume. Uh, let's move forward here. Yep, so notifications, you will see this um, through the demo. The system will generate notifications uh, real time. So as uh, when you procure a new service, um, it will automatically generate a notification. It'll provide you uh, alerts when something doesn't happen or doesn't perform properly. Uh, this is a major improvement from what we've had in the past. And let's take a look here. So with Microsoft uh, specifically, since Microsoft CSV tends to be a service that is most uh, consumed by our reseller partners and, of course, with your customers as well, uh, one of the things you will see is a much cleaner, more accessible experience for your customers and you when it comes to managing your subscriptions and licenses. Um, I know we're using some technology terminology here, so APS is basically that API integration between Ingram Micro and um, uh, and the vendor. You will also notice that through this enhanced in integration and APS development we perform with Microsoft, we're also going to be introducing some enhancements to the Azure CSP services uh, and something that I will show you as well in later this demo, at least during this uh, presentation. Uh, the other changes that you will notice here is on the management side, right? So in the future, uh, what we would like to showcase is that the um, services, when they're licenses, when they're procured from, micro, from Ingram Micro, in the in-control panel, you will see this number here, like five of 16 licenses uh, have been purchased or have been, uh, are being used. Uh, some of the ATS packages of vendors that we have optimized with uh, next CP um, will display information in these terms. They will show you that you have so many uh, licenses that are actually being allocated for specific users uh, out of a total number of licenses. With Microsoft specifically today, this functionality is not in place, but it is on the future roadmap over the next couple of months, um, which will provide you the ability and your customer to really have a good sense of control of how many total licenses are being used out of the total number of CSP licenses that have been procured. Uh, and the system will automatically apply licenses to any, any new users uh, when they are created. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as well. So why self-servicing, right? So we talk about this concept uh, uh, quite a bit here at Ingram Micro, right? Uh, so as it relates to reseller partners, most reseller partners tend to want uh, to, you know, to do all the servicing for their end customer, meaning the end customer calls you the reseller partner, they tell you that they want to buy additional resources or additional licenses or additional services, 
you log into the cloud marketplace and you go ahead and procure those additional services or additional resources, aka licenses, for the subscriptions that they've already consumed from you. Well, there is a concept or the idea that a reseller partner should have the ability, should they want to, enable the end customer to self-service. What that basically means is you're allowing the end customer to log into their customer control panel, thus the next CP, and go ahead and create their own users, also align, um, assign uh, available licenses or available services to those users, maybe even terminate users, um, change the user uh, admin rights if any are available, if they want to do that, also buy new services if they want to do that, as well as manage billing and uh, invoicing. So why self-servicing? Well, you know, this is a concept that's become very prevalent in, in how consumers do business today, right? I mean, think about it. For those of you that travel, when you fly on business trips or you go on a vacation, you know, how many of you do you currently check in using a self-service kiosk at the airport, right? I have a tendency to use my app on my phone when I check in, unless I'm checking a back end, bag, and even then, I walk straight up, I'm already checked in, and I just hand my bag over. Long days are uh, gone where, you know, you have to rely on a physical person to help you check in or even do a majority of the things online today, right? So self-servicing is becoming more of a concept that is readily accepted by your, you know, by consumers out there, your customers, even you yourself um, as you do business in an e-commerce world. And when you look at the, at the businesses out there as far as success, the rise and fall of different businesses, right? Let's look at a few examples. Radio Shack, a 94-year-old retailer selling the first mass market computer, closed its 4,000 stores in 2015 as the world of electronic shop there, shoppers shifted to online purchasing and, and, and the digital technology started emerging. Blockbuster, right? Um, I can't remember the last time I saw a Blockbuster store or even gone to a Blockbuster store to uh, rent videos. You know, it used to be, you know, at one time the staple in shopping and strip malls struggled to com compete with uh, the emergence of uh, new uh, newcomers out there like Netflix, right? Circuit City, once a top U.S. electronics retailer, went out of business in 2009. Its ultimate fall was, its, uh, was primarily due to its inability to respond quickly um, to the rise and fall and to the rise of online retailers like Amazon.com and aggressive mass merchants like Best at Walmart and Target. Uh, same thing with Borders, right? They're very slow to adapt to the e-book uh, phenomenon or even to build a user-friendly e-commerce site. These are all companies that made fatal mistakes and eventually saw massive losses in their sales uh, that ultimately, ultimately led to their collapse. Uh, conversely, uh, converse, um, on the opposite side, you have companies like Amazon, Netflix, eBay, Best Buy, right? These are companies that are very, very quickly and very aggressively change how they do business. So why am I, why are we covering this on this slide? Right? Because this does relate to you. When you look at how you do business with your customers, um, evolving and changing how you engage your end customers is super critical. Um, your customers are going to ask for ways to self-service. Your customers are going to ask for ways to do things more efficiently without necessarily having to engage you on every little activity that they require. Now, mind you, there are things that they're going to come to you uh, always. But to buy that additional Microsoft license, you know, you can enable your customers to do that on their own. So let's look at some statistics, right? E-commerce is growing 23% year over year. Yet 46% of American small businesses do not have a website. 67% of customers would rather self-serve than speak to a representative. They don't want to have to rely on other people, right? Customers like to feel uh, empowered that they can handle it themselves. These are self-sufficient customers. They like the knowledge they gain by finding things on their own. 75% say that self-service is a convenient way to address their customer service issues. They can do it anytime they want, and they can take as long as they need. In a time when smartphone owners perform the majority of their daily tasks on their phone while relaxing on the couch, self-service is a go-to experience 24 hours a day. It's a, it's a service that you as a reseller partner can provide to your customers, thus increasing your overall value to your customers. 
5%. So what does that 5% mean? So we did a study within Ingram Micro just to see uh, in our current reseller base, how many resellers are actually allowing end customers to self-manage. So it's kind of, uh, it was uh, rather surprising. 5% of total unique end customers today are logging into the customer control panel of our cloud marketplace. That means that only 5% of all of the end customers across all reseller partners on a global basis are actually logging in and doing self-management. On the other end of the spectrum, more than 20% of the reseller, uh, resellers that are currently buying services from Ingram Micro are actually logging in and impersonating, uh, impersonating an end customer in the control panel. And we see that number increasing on a daily basis. My challenge to you is look at the next CP as an opportunity to introduce your end customer um, to a way where they can go and self-manage, right? And with some of the configuration and customization capabilities that we are providing and will continue providing to you as a reseller partner, we feel that this will make it easier for you to make that decision. So to recap, right, convenience, efficiency, control, right, these are the things that, um, that are, um, that come to mind when you start thinking about self-servicing, right? People today want the Amazon experience. They want a perceived convenience when it comes to doing business. Speed is critical for self-service success. You may want to pay for that, <clears throat> you know, for that uh, really, you know, wonderful slow-cooked meal in a plush restaurant, but you certainly don't want to pay for it uh, and, and have to wait for it in something like McDonald's. Google is the king of speed, right? Before Google launched Gmail in 2004, it's created, you know, um, bought it for review. They decided it was too slow. It had to take um, way too much time for the page to load. As a result of observing the consumer behavior, Google found that any delay greater than, I don't know, 500 milliseconds, that's half a second, has a negative impact on customer behavior. People don't consciously notice delays, but they feel the slowness and will avoid it if possible in an environment that feels slow, right? So essentially by providing the self-service capability to your end customer, you're providing them the perception that they have more control. So you're providing them the perception that they have a faster um, ability to impact change within their organization. Okay. So with that in mind, take a look here. We kind of talked uh, touched on this a little bit. Um, when you start putting control in your customer's hands, you now have, um, not only you're improving your customer's experience, but you're also changing their expectations, right? Um, when it comes to prices, for example, people have a tendency uh, or have an expectation that if they're serving themselves, uh, they get some sort of reward or payback for the efforts they are putting in and the efforts they are saving the organization. Uh, this may be, of course, balanced by the convenience control factor. And as it relates to control, you know, you put things in their hand. Control is the greatest thing that the web has given us. When you go to the supermarket, you prefer to choose your own food rather than having someone pick the food for you. When you book airfare tickets, you prefer to select your own seat than having someone else choose it for you. When it comes to solving a business problem, having the ability to go and take a look and see what solutions are out there that can solve your business problem uh, provides your, you and your customer uh, an improved experience when shopping for services, right? All right, so why should you as a reseller partner care? Um, you know, we, we covered all of these, right? So this is more of a summary slot, right? Number one, it'll help you drive greater profitability. One of the things we notice from an analytics perspective is that the more services your customer consumes, the greater the profitability overall for you as a reseller partner, um, it, it goes up, right? So the more services that you expose to your customer, the more services that they uh, consume, not only does it generate new revenue opportunities, it increases your overall profitability with that client, but it also provides a much greater stickiness factor with your end customer, right? Your end customer is less likely to leave and do business with somebody else because of 
the dependency that they have and the, uh, based on the number of services they consume with you, right? So uh, with NextCP, there is a discussion that, um, that we will have in a few minutes, and that has to deal with what services are available for uh, consumption uh, that are optimized for NextCP. So why don't we get into it? And I know we have a lot of questions I see that are popping up. Uh, we're going to cover those at the end of the demo. So give me a moment while I switch over my screen and log into one of the demo accounts. Um, take a look here. Just a moment, please. All right, and logging in, and then I'll share my screen, and then I'll log into the demo account. Just a moment, please. All right, go into the control panel. And log in. let me log into the end customer that I'm going to do the demo with real quick, and then I'll share my screen. All right. And let's do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to log in here. I'm going to share my screen with you. So I'm going to show you uh, as a reseller partner, I am impersonating an end customer. So let me enable sharing my screen here. There we go. And all of a sudden, you can please validate that you can see my screen. Yes, looks good. Okay. All right, so here we go. So as you can see here, I'm in the reseller control panel, as you can all see here. Uh, in the reseller control panel, I am logged in as a reseller partner. And in this particular case, I'm going to log into this end customer, Gabriel's next CT test, right? So this is a test account that I use to basically uh, run, you know, simulations and make sure that things are working properly. Uh, so, as a reseller partner, I can take an action here and log in as a customer administrator. And I will impersonate the end customer. And when I click on that icon, it takes me to NextCP. So, this is the customer control panel. Uh, just to give you all a reminder, this is the improved version. This is the improved look and feel of what the customer control panel looks like today, which is this. Right? So this is the customer control panel that we're talking about. This is the old version that will be upgraded to the new look and feel, and that is this, next VP. So the first thing that you will notice is that the overall look and feel experience is, is greatly improved. On the left-hand side, you have a number of tabs associated to uh, the account management. You will notice that the uh, logo here is Ingram. Um, this logo here, you as a reseller partner, including the domain that shows up when they log into the customer control panel, can be customized with your brand. This is something very new that we're introducing with the launch of NextCP. It does require for you to bring your own domain and to provide an SSL certificate for this site or this portal. The notifications area, any new notifications that would pop up would show up over here. Uh, any alerts, say, for example, a service doesn't provision properly or maybe there is a billing issue or something related to the account that is uh, problematic, it would show up over here. I am the user, uh, so I'm logged in as Gabriel Ballo here, um, and I can sign out or I can edit my profile, okay? So uh, the other tabs are available. Uh, I can go into the Users tab. In the Users tab is where I go and create additional users, and I will show you that in a few minutes. Um, as we're going to simulate some, um, some components there. Uh, the Marketplace tab is where I can buy additional or new services. Uh, we are, by the way, we are launching this in U.S. at the end of this month. So next week is when U.S. will be enabled with NextCP. So all of you that are on this call and every single reseller in U.S. will have NextCP enabled and will show up all of your end customers' customer control panels. Um, the reason we're not launching it immediately is because we are making some updates specifically to the Marketplace tab. 
Uh, you will see right now that when I click on the Marketplace tab, it's uh, sorted uh, in a way that is not necessarily the best way. Uh, it's done alphabetically. We are introducing a improvement to the Marketplace tab that will provide visibility or, or provide visibility to the services available in a more logical category-based um, process. Uh, any domains that are basically procured or you have procured for your customer would show up over here so you can manage the domains or the end customer can manage their domains. And then from an account management uh, standpoint, by going to the account tab, this is where I can manage the entire account. Any orders or invoices associated to cloud services procured are going to show up over here. If there's uh, any history or, of any orders that were placed, whether they were new services or additional new resources for additional subscriptions, a renewal order, it would, it would show up over here. So the order history will show you, of course, this account is, is pretty clean, so there's no order history. Uh, any subscriptions that were purchased will show up over here. For those reseller partners like yourselves out there that have a cloud store um, enabled or you have built a cloud store with Ingo Micro, um, payment methods, right? So uh, credit cards that are basically used to make purchases by your end customer via your e-commerce cloud store, this is where you would go to manage it. Uh, let me pause for a second. I'm making an assumption that everybody on the call here knows what Cloud Store is. So let me explain. Ingram Micro offers you, the reseller partner, the ability to extend via an e-commerce platform the cloud services that you have access to in the Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace. So you can essentially build an e-commerce store. You can expose the services or all services or some of the services or any, you know, just one of the services that Ingram Micro makes available. On this e-commerce platform, you can align that e-commerce cloud store with a payment merchant account that you own. So, for example, if you have an account with uh, Authorize.net or with Vantive or with uh, Stripe, you can set up your account with that merchant account. So when your end customer or a new visitor to your website goes to buy, say, a Microsoft service, they make a payment via credit card and gets paid directly into that merchant account which you own. Uh, and this is where they would manage those, that credit card once they capture um, the credit card information on the first purchase. Okay. Uh, and then, obviously, I can manage my account profile. And then any ac action logs, so any activity that occurs in the system is captured here, so you can always do a bit of an audit. So with that, uh, let's get into it a little bit, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead into the marketplace and I'm going to, let's see, let's enable a cloud service here. Let's go with uh, secure messaging. Why not? And I'm going to select uh, Sirius, there we go, encryption for the first five users, okay? It's $40 a month and you notice that because um, the payment information right now, I don't have a cloud store set up, so I don't have the option to pay via credit card. For VCLA partners that don't have a cloud store, it's set up as an external payment collection, meaning the end customer can go ahead and make a purchase in this uh, marketplace here, and uh, the service will provision automatically, and then you can invoice your customer, your end customer separately, or you can use the system to send an invoice, and then you would perform the collections for the services that they purchase externally from the marketplace. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this purchase. And, and Craig, I saw your message there, your question. I will answer the question. Yes, that's a great question, by the way. I'll cover that in a few minutes. So we're going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and process that order, and you will start seeing some activity that occurs in the system, right? All right. From a user perspective here, so user management, when I want to create a new user, um, in the past, it wasn't always the easiest way to do it, right? So what we have done is we've simplified the process uh, by, a lot, uh, by making it possible for you to generate or create multiple users at the same time. So in this case, I'm going to create Gabriel2, uh, Ballo2, and my email, Gabriel2 at Ballo2. I'm just making this email up right now. It doesn't actually exist. Um, I have the option of um, assigning different emails to sign in and receive notifications. 
Uh, I have the option of sending uh, activation information for any services that I may assign to this particular user um, at the same time when I create the user. I can also do the following. I can actually generate, as I mentioned, a third user, for example. at the same time. Now, one of the features that I would like to show you, unfortunately, I did not have enough time to um, set up the, uh, this particular demo account, is some of the services are set up so that at the same time while creating the user, you can actually enable and activate a license or service that you had already procured for that organization at the same time, okay? Um, Microsoft is one of those vendors that we are going to enable this functionality for in the very near future. Uh, some of the vendors like Dropbox, uh, for example, have that capability already in, um, enabled. So look for that in the very near future with Microsoft. So in other words, if you bought, say, Microsoft CSP services or Office 365 for this organization and you have, say, 10 licenses procured and you're creating an additional, um, an additional uh, user, um, you can create the user and assign the licenses at the same time. In the eventuality that a license is not available for consumption, it will go through the process of procuring an additional license for that user so that it can provision. I'm going to go ahead and create those users. And there we go, we start seeing some, uh, some, some notifications there, okay? Uh, in this space is also where I can manage those particular users. If I have some activity or some, um, uh, some services that are available for consumption or, you know, I can enable, right, for this particular user, this is where I can go ahead and do that. I can reset the password. I can disable the user. I can delete the user. I can log in as the user. So as an admin for the end customer, in this particular case, I have a lot of power and ability to manage the, uh, the account. Let me go back in here. There we go, so we have three users. We showed you the marketplace uh, and from an account management. Again, this, there's not a lot of things happening right now. The, the purchase that I made is still provisioning, so we're not, we're not gonna see it yet. Uh, but I wanted to show you really quick some of, the, um, some of the, the tabs and some of the options that are available in the customer control panel. And I believe Craig had a question. I saw it briefly flash across my screen and the question was related to, can you customize or can you decide what services are available in the marketplace? The answer is yes, you'll be able to do that. And you do that configuration in the customer control panel. And I'm sorry, in the reseller control panel. This is the place where you manage your own account as a reseller partner with Ingram Micro. And this is also where you do all the configuration associated with the online store. It's also where you go ahead, uh, where you can go and do some configurations on the actual um, next CP. Now, in the resale control panel, you'll see things like CCTV2. This is a technical term basically describing next CP. So you can go in here and customize the navigation portion or, in essence, what is being displayed. No, it looks complicated in here, but it's really not. And we have guides available in the knowledge base that, that'll kind of talk through how you can configure it. And as far as what services are showing up um, in, in the reseller control, in, in the customer control panel, you do that by going to the actual service plans themselves, right? Uh, so when you go in here, you can take a look at the various different sales categories that are available, uh, and you can decide what shows up in, in what place, what uh, and what service plans show up in what place, whether they show up in the online store and CCP, right? And in some cases, you'll see that some things are not available, um, are limited to be uh, exposed only in CCP or only in online store. Um, so you can, you can uh, customize or configure that on your own. Now, again, we have instructions in the knowledge base uh, to follow, so, um, so you can do that. So let's switch back to uh, the PowerPoint here real quick. We have a few more slides to go. And then I'd like to maybe open it up to some of the, um, some of the questions that are being asked. Okay, Alyssa, please confirm that we're back on the PowerPoint. Back on. Fantastic, thank you. All right. So uh, with that in mind, 
let's talk about what vendors are going to be optimized with NextCP, right? So as you as you saw that NextCP has a completely different GUI interface, has a completely redesigned user experience. It's more intuitive. Uh, it provides greater functionality and simplicity. With that, it means that the um, the uh, ATS packages, that API integration between Ingram Micro and the vendor and you as a reseller and how things are being consumed in the cloud marketplace, all of those APS packages have to be updated. When we go live in US, the services that are going to be included with the um, NextCP, you know, as NextCP optimized will include Acronis, the Titan, Cisco Spark, WebEx, Dropbox, Microsoft Azure, and Office 365, okay? The rest of the vendors that are available today in the cloud marketplace, we are in the process of working with each vendor and upgrading their ATS packages so that by the end of the year, every single service will be optimized and work flawlessly within NextCP, okay? So of course, naturally the question comes, well, what happens for the services that are not NextCP optimized? What does that look like? Well, what we have done is we have taken the existing control panel that we have today, right? And for the vendors that are not NextCP optimized, we'll show up within the NextCP dashboard as an iframe, but will be displayed as the old customer control panel. So from a user perspective, yeah, it's not optimal, but it's functional. And it doesn't uh, take the user away from the panel that they're already using to manage their, um, manage their account, okay? So when you, for example, say in this particular case, Mosey Protest, you see it here in the, in, in the screenshot. Uh, in this case, this particular vendor is not optimized for NextCP. When I select that vendor in the tab on the left-hand side, it will pop up and it will look and feel like the old customer control panel, okay? So let's talk about Microsoft Azure. I thought I saw briefly a, uh, a quick um, question that popped up, and hopefully I'll answer your question. If not, uh, when we review all the questions posted by everybody, uh, we'll, we'll see what I can do about answering your question. We have updated the Azure CSP module. Uh, the new update that we uh, pushed out for Azure is this functionality is only available with NextCP, okay? Uh, it's also set up to be fully integrated with Ingram Micro Cloud Orchestrator. So if you're not sure what Cloud Orchestrator is, I highly recommend that you engage the sales team so that they can provide you a demo and they can talk to you about what Orchestrator is. It's essentially high level. It's a way to give some controls in your hand uh, with relation to infrastructure as a service, allow you to configure IaaS uh, services for your customers, including you know, network and security, uh, storage and computing power uh, under one control panel, uh, regardless of the vendor that's being used, okay? So it really makes it much simpler for you. The updates to the Azure CSP module, right, that we are pushing out will provide you, the partner, more efficiency in the form of enhanced billing, transparent pricing, uh, provide you with enhanced tools uh, as a reseller partner to, you know, to, to more easily deploy and manage IS infrastructure as a service in Azure. It provides you with automated cloud deployments, right, uh, quick and easy deployment of cloud infrastructure. Um, it'll uh, provide you the ability to build out your solution a little bit more uh, effectively, right? Essentially helping you move to the cloud faster and simpler, okay? So with regards to Azure specifically, right? With the new Azure package in NextCP, you get detailed reporting, right? It provides you, our partner, with detailed billing information that can be easily interpreted. Consumption of data can be more um, can be reviewed more easily to reconcile your billing your build usage. Uh, the module will um, process usage data and present proper usage breakdown for your end customer and you as the reseller partner. Uh, some specifics, high level, right? Some specifics are going to be included, things like uh, customer usage, uh, reconcile usage uh, statistics, downloadable reports, transparent billing, um, an explanation of the charges that you're getting on uh, Azure services, right? 
The units of measures are more easily and more, cl more clarified. They're defined better, right? Hours, gigabytes, users, nodes, et cetera, okay? Let's take a look here. Uh, the deployment of Azure services is, uh, has been greatly improved. Uh, when you uh, log in to NextEP and you enable Azure services, right? So if you saw here, um, I'm not going to share my screen right now, but uh, in NextEP there's a, a tile that says enable Azure, right? You simply click that and with, uh, with a number of clicks, like two or three clicks, you're enabling Azure. And once you enable Azure, you can go in and you start provisioning using wizards and templates and you can start building specific Azure services whether you do it for your end customer or your end customer can do it on their own, okay? Uh, what else here? And let's take a look. Yep, we kind of covered all of this. And enhanced subscription management, yep. So we talked about, um, you know, the overall enhancements when it comes to managing uh, services, right? So not just Azure CSP subscription management under the same tenant, but also uh, managing all the services within a single panel, right? And then I believe that pretty much covers Azure, unless there's another slide here on Azure. Let's take a look. Ah, that's about it, right? So before I get into the questions, uh, let's talk about what's the next step. At the end of this month, Ingram Micro will be launching NextCP or enabling NextCP for all reseller partners in US, okay? That means that all of your end customers that you have deployed or you have set up in the Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace will be enabled with NextCP. So your call to action is when this occurs and you will receive notifications and messaging around the, um, around the launch, you need to log in and impersonate your end customers. Get familiar with NextCP because your customers may be asking you questions about it. If you have questions, now's the time to contact your sales team and inquire. They'll be more than happy to walk you through it through a personal demo if that's what you wish. Invite your end customers to self to log in and self-manage, self-serve. Um, if nothing else, it provides them the sense and the um, and the um, um, the expectation that you are empowering them and enabling them to be more efficient with their time, right? Go ahead and manage your existing purchase services within NextCP, buy additional services and resources, and more importantly, number six right here, take the time to learn how to brand NextCP. We have very um, detailed instructions available to you, and it will provide you with the guidance to do that. If you run into any challenges, again, contact the team and we will help you uh, to get that brand in place. So uh, with that, let's uh, take a look at some of the questions that have been posted. Uh, just give me a second while I put up my screen here. Q and A. All right, so the first question um, regarding the e-commerce store question. Uh, does that apply for any product Ingram distributes or just, CS, just for CSP? So, Terry, that's a fantastic question. The cloud store e-commerce option is directly tied to the cloud marketplace. So what does that mean? It's simply an extension of your account. You as a reseller have an account with Ingram Micro. Any services or cloud services you consume on behalf of your end customer in the cloud marketplace, you manage in the resource control panel, right? And now, as you saw, you can manage your end customer in NextCP. Cloud Store is an extension of your account. So you essentially can go out, uh, go out there and select one service or all services and make them visible in the e-commerce storefront for anybody on the web to go and buy cloud services from you. When they make those purchases, they make a payment using a credit card in the merchant account that you own. So to answer your question, it's for any cloud service available in the cloud marketplace, not any product that Ingram Micro distributes. So you wouldn't be able to set up a cloud store and then sell uh, something like, say, uh, an HP printer, okay? Uh, okay, so the next question, Tony has a question. Will the current information be transferred to the, ne the new NextCP? Um, 
So the answer to answer your question, yeah. So anything that is already in place will just simply be readily uh, available and visible in NAXCP. There's no action required on you as a resource partner to transfer any information. It's simply a uh, upgrade to the customer control panel. So when you log in for the first time, any cloud services your customer has already purchased will show up on the left-hand side in the tabs window. Okay. So let me go here. Oh, I missed some questions at the very top. Uh, let's take a look. Is the next CP mobile app for Android or iOS in the Google Play Store now? If not, when it will be? It's not a, it's not a mobile app, right? So uh, essentially, next CP is optimized for mobile. So when you, when you go to the URL, uh, the next CP URL, your control panel URL, it will be optimized and will display properly on your mobile device. There's no, uh, there's no app that needs to be uh, downloaded. Uh, next question was about when will the recording uh, URL be made available? Uh, this is a very helpful presentation. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate that. Um, I imagine that uh, the marketing team will provide a URL of the recording of this webinar um, within the next four, to four hours to 12 hours, hopefully, uh, if not sooner. So please look out for that. I'll, I'll step in real quick. It actually takes a little bit longer than that for the recording to process. So we'll be emailing it out to all of the attendees on Monday, Tuesday at the very latest. Ah, okay. Thank you for that, uh, Alyssa. I appreciate you correcting me. Uh, Eric has a question. Can we still offer the client net terms? Eric, I'm assuming that your question is in relation to Cloud Store, uh, where I mentioned that customers have to make a payment via credit card. The answer is yes you can still configure uh, your end customers and apply a customer class to your end customer. And what I mean by that, you can create a customer class and call it terms class, and you can apply that terms class to an existing end customer. That end customer, when they go to make a purchase via your cloud store, they don't need to enter credit card information to make a payment. Uh, you can extend those terms however you see fit, and of course you would have to manage the invoicing and the collection of payments from your customer uh, and reconciling all of the accounting piece manually as a reseller partner in the reseller control panel. Uh, okay, so let's move down here. New user setup. So Terry has another question. Just to confirm, we will now be required to enter a new user email address versus just updating the account for licenses. Possibly yes. Uh, I guess it depends on what you mean by that, whether it's, you know, for logging in for the first time or whether it's, um, setting up new users um, when you're applying licenses. I'm assuming it has to deal with setting up a new user and applying a service to that new user. Um, you have to create a new user. Um, you, let me rephrase that. You can buy additional services or additional resources or additional licenses without applying uh, those resources, those licenses, to a new user. So, for example, Let's say uh, your end customer, ABC Financial, consumes uh, five Microsoft Office 365 licenses. They've got five users. All of them are consumed. Your end customer says, hey, you know what? Monday, next week, I'm hiring five new people. I would like to buy five additional Office 365 licenses and have them ready from when I onboard them. You as a reseller partner can go in, buy additional Microsoft licenses for, those, uh, for that organization, and they will just sit there unused until you're ready to assign them to a user. Conversely, you can do the opposite. You can buy a cloud service or a resource or a license at the time when you create a user, right? So it's, it's your choice. Uh, okay, looks like G had another question around the recording, so we already answered that. Yes, there will be a recording. Um, so CSP referrals, right? So for those that don't know, Ingram Micro also offers a program called the Ingram Micro Referral Program, where you as a reseller partner act as an agent. You go out there, you do all the selling, and you do all the business uh, relationship management with your end customer. And then the end customer is routed to a specific URL where they procure cloud services. They pay Ingram Micro. Ingram Micro does the invoicing, the billing, the invoicing, and collection for the service to consume. In return, Ingram Micro then pays you, the reseller partner, a commission on a monthly basis for the services that are consumed. The question in this particular case is whether or not the referral stores will also be updated. The answer is yes. In fact, the referral store will be updated on the same day that all of the reseller partners are getting updated with NextCP. 
Okay. Let's take a look. Will we have a single location for all clients like the CSP we are viewing now to be able to manage in a similar fashion? So, in, um, so today, if I understand the question correctly, and I apologize if I'm making the wrong assumption here. Today, when you buy Microsoft Office 365 services or Office, let's say Microsoft CSP services, in order to manage them, you have to log into the Microsoft Partner Portal in order to manage the, your purchases, right? Assign users for the services that you consume. That's how it exists today. Even with the increased functionality and user experience that we have in XCP, that does not change. That remains the same. However, in the next couple of months, we are updating the ATS package for Microsoft. What that means is your customers and you will no longer have to go to Microsoft Partner Portal to manage your Microsoft purchases and the users associated with those purchases. You will only have to go to one place, and that is the Ingram Micro Customer Control Panel Next EP. That's coming out this year. It's going to happen very quickly. Please look out for that because it's a massive, massive improvement to the um, Microsoft service offerings in enabling you to manage and enabling your customer to, you know, to go to one place and simply manage all of your purchases. And Gabriel, I'll jump in on the referral question that was, was clarified in the Q&A as well. The only place that you will be able to see your list of referral end customers is going to be in your Post Affiliate Pro control panel. If, um, if you're looking to just manage your referral customers, you do have to log into their individual control panels uh, to manage the, the user base still. If you want the full list of all of your referral end users, you will need to use your link to Post Affiliate Pro. Thank you, Marcin. That's fantastic. Okay, so the next question. Dean had a question about how do we set up and use the cloud marketplace? Um, so that's a great question. So Dean, and for those that don't know, the Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace is a division of Ingram Micro. In order to be able to buy any cloud services on the cloud marketplace, you have to be an Ingram Micro visa. That means you have to have an account with Ingram Micro. In addition, you have to have login credentials set up for IngramMicro.com. It's what we call I am online. Okay. Those same credentials that you use to access the uh, e-commerce store for hardware and software is what you use to log into the cloud marketplace. The first time you log in, when you use those credentials, the Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace will ask you to fill out some information and validate your BCN, so your branch customer number, and then it'll go through the process of creating your reseller account within the cloud marketplace. Don't have to remember a, a new, you know, new login credentials for a new website. It's all integrated via single sign-on with I am online. So hopefully that answered your question. If it didn't, Dean, please contact the sales team, and they'll be more than happy to walk you through and helping you register and create a reseller account in the cloud marketplace. Okay, next question. Chris, hi, Chris. So currently we do both CSP and CSP referrals in the CSP. We are able to see those clients, but when it is referral account, I have to log directly into their account to see anything or get support for this account. Um, that's the, and, Gabriel, that's yeah, the question. Ahead, Martin. That was the clarification on the question for reviewing customers on the uh, reseller control panel for marketplace versus referral. So that would, that would go through Post Affiliate Pro. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we have a couple more minutes. I'm going to answer maybe one or two more questions, and then any other questions that you have, uh, we'll have um, the sales team review it and follow up with everybody via a email. Um, let's take a look here. So there was a question from Mike that says, just Azure or will you offer Amazon services too? We are in the process of working on an APS package with Amazon, so in the long term, yes, Amazon is one of the uh, cloud services that we're looking to deploy within the marketplace and within XCP. Uh, G had a question regarding pricing, right? Uh, can we show pricing that is not prorated? Proration occurs when you're uh, buying a resource or your customer buys a resource for an existing subscription that is, when the purchase is made in the middle or somewhere in between the period of that subscription, meaning, if they have an Office 365 subscription and if the period is from the 1st until the 30th and you're buying an additional license on the 15th, that additional license for the very first month of billing is prorated to meet up with the billing period. 
of that subscription, so from the 15th until the 30th. That means that the following month, that additional license then gets invoiced um, for the full amount for the full period. To answer your question, no. Unfortunately, at this time, it's not possible. It's because of how the system works and how the resource probation occurs to meet up with the subscription period of the subscription on the end customer. Uh, okay, so a question from Dean. I logged in at us.cloud.im, but I don't see how to activate Cloud Store. It's not something that you uh, activate yourself, Dean. You would have to contact the sales team like Marcin, and they'll walk you through the process of setting up a Cloud Store. Um, and then there was a statement and a question. Azure has a huge number of resources. Is there capability to provision these directly from Marketplace? With the enhanced uh, capabilities on the Azure package, you will notice once, once it's enabled, you will notice that, yes, you will be able to configure Azure services more simplistically and uh, more effectively within either the Ingram MicroCloud Orchestrator, uh, which works with Azure very, very well, or just Azure by itself within the next, uh, within next CP. And with that, I'm out of time. I hope that I've answered everybody's question. I hope everybody had a great time on this webinar. I know I did. And uh, I certainly hope that you walk away with some new information that you will take to improve and uh, increase your overall experience for your customers and your business. Thank you for joining. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, Gabriel. That concludes the audio portion for this webinar. If you do have additional questions, you can either continue to enter them in the Q&A box or reach out to your sales rep. Uh, if you're not sure of the right person to reach out to, you can contact cloud.lnd at ingrammicro.com. That's cloud.lnd as in launch and development at ingrammicro.com. I just entered it into the chat box as well if you need to pull that email address. So thank you for attending. Have a great weekend, everyone.